In this video, I'm going to share the results of a study called The Ugly Truth of People's Decisions in Speed Dating. If you want to read the study for yourself, just type that into Google. For this research, they got a bunch of men and women who were about to engage in some speed dating, and they gave them 100 hypothetical points to allocate across six different characteristics. That was attractive, shared interest, ambitious, fun, intelligent, and sincere. The first thing they asked people is, what are you looking for in a partner? What are you hoping to find in this experience? Have a look at this graph. So you can see here that men's top priority is a woman's appearance. And it's really heavily skewed that way. It's more important than anything else. For women, it's a lot more evenly spread. They kind of want a mix of all characteristics. Intelligence is rated as the highest, the most important for women. There's really no surprises looking at that. That's pretty much what we would expect. Men want a girl who's hot. They don't really care if she's ambitious or not. And women want a man who's more well-rounded. The next graph is really funny because it asks women what they think other women are looking for. Ask men what they think other men are looking for. So they're judging not themselves, but just their own gender, their competitors, so to speak. As you can see from this graph, men think that other men are after attractiveness and so do women. They overwhelmingly put that as the most important characteristic they think that other women are going to be looking for. I find that really, really funny because I often get the sense when doing the interviews for this channel that in order to really get to the truth of a question, you can't ask a woman about herself. You have to ask her a hypothetical how do you feel like other women would respond to this? What do you think other women are looking for? I explicitly tell my contributors when talking to a woman, sure, try and get some personal information about her. But if you feel like there's more to the story than you're getting, just push a little bit deeper. Ask about her friends. Ask about women that she's known in the past. You're more likely to get an honest answer that way. So if we put these two graphs next to each other, side by side, and do a comparison, we can see that men's idea of themselves and what they think other men are looking for is basically the same. So we have pretty good self-awareness and as men, we're pretty straightforward. We're pretty honest about what we want. But look at women. With women, there is a huge discrepancy. Women claim that they want a well-rounded man, but when it comes to predicting what other women are looking for, they basically put a huge priority on the looks. Now, as to which answer is actually more honest, whether women are answering about themselves or if they're answering about other women, I'll leave that for you to decide. Have a look at this next graph. This shows what men think women are looking for and what women think men are looking for. As you can see, women think men just want looks. And they're not wrong. That is the most important thing, as we saw in the earlier graph. But look at this. They have completely maxed out as far as you can possibly go on this graph. Women think that men obsess on looks more than we actually do. This actually fits in well with my theory that women put a lot of pressure on themselves about their own appearance. They obsess over looks plenty. And it's just a cultural convention that they're able to backwards rationalize that this must be because of men. Whereas what they should do is just take responsibility for their own focus on looks. On the whole, though, both men and women know what's up. This is pretty accurate. If you compare it with the first graph, it's pretty similar. So people are making a pretty good guess. Now, so far, all that you've seen is just data that's been gathered from before the speed dating event. It's people speculating about what they want or what they think other people might want. Now we're going to see the real results. We're going to see the data after the speed dating and see if people's guesses actually correlates with the reality. So what the researchers did is they got each person to rank the person that they just spoke to during the speed dating out of 10 for all of the different characteristics, intelligence, ambition, appearance, all of that stuff. And then they plotted that data against the likelihood of having a second date with that person, i.e. how many positive responses that person got. You can see that data here presented in these graphs. And you see this part here, this R score correlation coefficient. What that means is that's how good a predictor their scores out of 10 were in the various characteristics to how likely that person was to get a second date. And the closer to one, the more reliable it was, the more consistent it was as a prediction method. As you can see, attractiveness has the highest R score, 0.795. So in other words, of all of the attributes, the most consistently reliable predictor of whether or not somebody would get a second date after speed dating was how attractive they are. Now that's really high. That's a very, very reliable predictor. 
compare that to something like intelligence, which had a really, really low reliability rating and R score of just 0.286, which is surprising if you believed women at the beginning when they said that the most important attribute to them was going to be intelligence. That's what they said. But as it turns out, attractiveness is nearly three times more likely to correlate with giving somebody a chance for a second date. The other really reliable attributes that were really solid as predictors were interest, like shared interests, and fun. And that makes sense. Fun makes sense because this is a speed dating environment. You need to spike the woman's emotions. You need to be good at flirting. So if you're coming across as fun, that really, really suits the environment. And a shared interest also makes sense because you've only got four minutes with that person. You need to create a bond quickly. So if you have shared ideas, shared beliefs, uh, shared interests, that's going to help cement that bond and increase the likelihood that you're going to get a second date. In contrast, ambition, sincerity, and as we mentioned, intelligence turned out to not be very important. Now that we have the results from after the speed dating, let's compare it with the initial set of data so that we can see what correlation there is between what men and women say that they want and what the reality ended up being. Have a look at this graph. This is the male graph. And you can see in light blue, that's what men thought that they wanted. And the green shows what they actually wanted. Now, as you can see, it's pretty much spot on for attractiveness. And I like that. That's, that's a positive sign because as men, we might be shallow. We might care a lot about a woman's appearance, but at least we know it. We're self-aware. It turns out that men overestimated the importance that they would place on sincerity and intelligence, and they underestimated how much fun, ambition, and shared interests were going to play on our dating choices. Now, this graph is the female graph, and you can see that pink is their prediction for what they thought they would want, and purple is the reality. And you can see that they really don't know themselves that well. They were basically off on everything. They massively underestimated the importance of attractiveness, of shared interests, of fun, and they overestimated how much they would care about sincerity, intelligence, and ambition. So those are the results. And if I had to summarize what I think that this reveals is that in the initial interaction with somebody, some characteristics are a lot more important than others. So women, when they're thinking about what they want in a man, they might genuinely want a well-rounded man, a man who is sincere, ambitious, intelligent, you know, all of those deeper personality characteristics. But in order to actually get to that place, you need to succeed in the initial attraction. You need to be good at flirting. And in that context, things like fun, things like attractiveness are going to be much more important. In particular, I think it's consistently funny how often women underestimate the importance of a man's appearance as to their dating choices. Men might be shallow, but hey, we admit it. We know that about ourselves. I think the takeaway here is that yes, as a man, you want to be well-rounded in as many different areas as possible, but a woman's not really going to give you the chance to demonstrate how well-rounded you are unless you can flirt well, unless you can play the game. So if you're going to turn up to a speed dating event, make sure that you're well-groomed, you look good, make sure you've got a fun vibe going, and make sure you're able to articulate what your interests are so that you can find common ground with women. Did you know that only about 60% of my video content actually makes it onto YouTube? The rest of it is available on my Patreon page. My latest video covers an extremely important topic. Which path is more likely to lead to happiness? settling down into a long-term monogamous relationship with one high-quality woman, or indulging your desire for variety and novelty and having lots of short-term relationships. I talk in detail about the various costs and benefits associated with each path, as well as some tips and advice on how I think that you should proceed. The answer may surprise you. This video was inspired by a question from one of my patrons. So if you've had a question you've always wanted to ask me, something you wanted me to create a video on, or if you just want access to all the exclusive content, please sign up at my Patreon page. It's only $5 a month and it is a fantastic way to support the channel. I really hope to see you over there. A lot of people say that they don't want to judge a person just by their looks, but the first time you see somebody, that's what you see in their looks. You don't know anything about them. So like, if mm -hmm. I think somebody cute, I'll go talk to them, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yes, it have nice people that are not as attractive, but mm -hmm. that's like, you have to get to know them first and then you'd probably be attracted to them. But if you see somebody cute, you'd instantly be attracted to them. So that's like a tree out of 10. Make, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. 
see that that honesty is why like some people might tell you something.